Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and big amount of bite-sized pieces. Today, got some pretty great stuff coming up. First up, Grayscale says institutional fund featuring Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and others is now registered with the SEC. And this will play onto a piggyback of another big story going on where BNY Mellon, the oldest bank in America and almost the world, uh, Grayscale Investments forges agreement with BNY Mellon to provide asset servicing and ETF services for Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. I know we've heard a lot of things about uh, ETFs coming up, but I think this one might be actually the real deal. And we'll follow up with some uh, interesting stories about cryptocurrency trading volume plunges as interest wanes. And we're going to take a look at some FUD articles and what is actually going on as far as boots in the ground around the entire nation and uh, most specifically Texas. So we'll take a look at all those things that are going on. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market and market's down. So we've got a market cap of 1.35 trillion. Again, we're down. Great stories all around, but here we are. And uh, everything is just down across the board. I'm not going to go over it. It is what it is. July is going to be uh, a sucky month, we'll just say. And I think we're going to rebound in uh, August and September and October, especially with what's going on over here. So let's just break into today's uh, top story where we talk about Grayscale registered with the SEC. So what is going on here? This, there is no coincidences, and when both of these stories break at the same time, it makes me sit up and take notice. So, the large cap fund containing six top crypto assets, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Chainlink, and Cardano, uh, is going to be registered with the SEC. Vice President of Legal at Grayscale, Craig Salm, says this, We hold our products to a higher standard because this is what investors want and what we believe they deserve. Events such as the large cap fund becoming our third SEC reporting company and the additional Form 10 filing signal that there is continued investor interest in gaining exposure to the growing digital currency ecosystem within existing regulatory frameworks. I know we are not uh, big proponents of uh, regulation. I know some people in the community just hate it, but I'm telling you, I've said this a thousand times, we need a little bit of clarity to really get this thing moving. And if we don't, there is so much ambiguity out there that big businesses and big money really can't get in. So just give us a little bit of regulatory clarity and we can actually move forward. And I think this is a step in the right direction. Uh, given the approval, the large cap fund will now have to start filing quarterly 10 Qs and annual reports 10 Ks along with its uh, grayscale Bitcoin and Ethereum funds. Additionally, qualified investors who purchase shares in the fund's private placement will have the required holding reduced from 12 months to six months under Rule 144. And here we can just see the actual filing right here, SEC, Form 10, and blah, blah, blah. What, what is that? So that's great. Good for them. So here's the big thing. Where it says right here about uh, holding period reduced from 12 months to six months, there is a uh, unlock period that is coming up uh, around the 17th, 18th, 19th, and going all the way to the 28th of this month in July. And um, I can just tell you that for all the things that are happening, people look at that and like, oh no, uh, Grayscale is going to unlock all their Bitcoin. But it, it's just like Willie Wu says, it's like the Hotel California. Uh, you can check in, but you can never leave. I don't check out, you never leave, whatever. But really what happens is Bitcoin goes into, these, in, into uh, Grayscale and they just issue these funds uh, this paper, this well, kind of like an ETF. And what they're releasing uh, is the actual uh, lockup period or the actual uh, funds that are in there. And it's not the actual Bitcoin. So they can sell and do whatever else they want with the, bit, with, with the paper as it goes up or down. That's not the big thing. So when people start talking about, ah, there's going to be this huge crash, it's not. They're not selling Bitcoin, just the other parts of it. And that is it. So that is the first part, I think, to one of, one of the bigger stories. And look, Grayscale is the adult in the room, which leads us to our next point where we talk about Grayscale and BNY Mellon. What's going on here? Well, this is from the actual website of BNY Mellon, so we know it's actually legit. Uh, July 13th, Grayscale Investments announced today that it has selected BNY Mellon as an asset servicing provider for Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. That's great. Then the, the, Again, banks getting into the foray of cryptocurrency. BNY Mellon will provide Grayscale Bitcoin Trust with fund accounting and administrative, administration effective October 1st, 2021. Additionally, it is anticipated that BNY Mellon will provide transfer agency and ETF services for the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust upon its conversion to an ETF. Why is this so big? 
Who cares if BNY Mellon gets into it? Well, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And guess what? BNY Mellon has a nice little 2.2 trillion assets under management and 41.7 trillion assets under custody and or administration, and they are in 35 countries. So if you don't think this is like a big deal for what, you know, BNY Mellon getting uh, involved in a cryptocurrency and handling all these things, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it is a big deal. So to finish this up, the agreement will offer Grayscale improved scalability, resiliency, and automation through BNY Mellon's market-leading platform, including BNY's proprietary ETF center. <laughs> they got their own center for the ETFs, which offers technology specifically designed to support digital asset ETFs. Look, what the SEC is looking for is safety. They don't want people to get screwed over, and I know people will, will debate this all day long. That's their job, right? That's their job. And I, I assume that some people don't do their job, but a lot of people do. And I think what they're looking for is assurance. There's not all this manipulation and they can actually trust something and uh, you know, they can put it out to the people and uh, they won't get, like I said, screwed over. So I think with BNY Mellon coming aboard and going, look, here's all the information that you want. We've already done a ton of these. We already know what we're doing. We can get this out to people. Just trust us. Let's do a filing. Let's make this happen. Bing, bang, boom. That's it. So then uh, to finish up, uh, Michael Sonnenschein, CEO of Grayscale Investments says, BNY Mellon has a long-standing reputation as a trusted provider and has established one of the first teams dedicated to servicing the growing digital currency asset class. We are pleased that BNY Mellon will join a group of Grayscale's best-in-class service providers, helping us deliver a seamless industry-leading investment experience. And I couldn't have said it any better. So look, um, I think this is big news. We'll see it all plays out. We've been hearing about ETF since 2012. And it hasn't happened yet, but we have never had these rails like we have right now. So uh, I'm positive. I'm uh, cautiously optimistic, and we'll see what happens. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece about the good old trading volume of cryptocurrency. This was an interesting one because there's multiple layers here. Uh, and it talks about cryptocurrencies are on, on a slump. Trading volumes are down 40% across all the exchanges. Uh, in June, Bitcoin hit 28,000, which sucked, but here we are. I think it actually might hit that again in July. That's just me. But the report pointed to, uh, and they're talking about why this all happened. It reported to China as a major catalyst. Remember that, China? According to Reuters, which reported on it earlier Monday, China's latest of many efforts over the years to crack down the industry have had a greater impact than ever before. Let me show you a picture of what I'm talking about. This is always the thing. China bans Bitcoin all the time, right? So just so you know, if you're new to this, this space, China's banned Bitcoin and miners and everything else since 2017. They did in 2018, 2019, 2019. And they're going to keep doing it because they're going to keep re-emphasizing that they banned it. And the lamestream media is going to pick it up and go, oh, they banned Bitcoin. They've already done it. So like all the different Bitcoin miners that are moving, good. I thought it was going to take a lot longer. I thought it was going to be like the free market enterprise. And they're going to slowly come here. China just gave us a gift and said, get out. And guess where they're going? Here. <laughs> which I'm happy. So the Chinese crackdown has caused a lot of fear, which is showing up in markets, said Teddy Vili, chief investment officer at uh, Perval or Pervaye Group. The digital, digital asset ecosystem got punched in the face. <laughs> so it's currently up against the ropes versus fighting in the middle of the ring. Typically, when you have large sell-offs, participants are quite fearful and pull back their ships. And this is, this is the mentality of everybody out there for the, the average retail investor who doesn't really dig deep and find and figure out what's going on. We know what's going on. This is good news. And in a little bit, I'm going to bring in my friend Ian, and he's going to talk about the different things that are going on in Austin right now with all the Bitcoin miners coming in, because he is the boots on the ground guy who can tell us exactly all these Bitcoin miners from China, and they all want to be here, which is great. So also, factors behind the crackdown, China ordered a halt to crypto as it prepares to launch its own state-backed digital currency, the digital yuan, good for them. And the shutter mining operations, 50 to 60%. Great, whatever. So uh, I, I find it odd, though, that of all the things that are happening, there was an article that just came out which talked about uh, Bitmain co-founder Wu says regulatory pressure is healthy for crypto. And this was his direct quote. Crypto billionaire said that while regulatory pressure has increased, the higher level of interest will benefit the reputation of crypto overall. So that while, so we're talking about regulatory pressure, meaning that, hey, if uh, we want to actually be taken seriously, we need a little regulation. And that's from a guy who just got booted out of his country. So I think there's something to be said there. Uh, to finish this up, additionally, the emerging 
ESG narrative or uh, clean energy narrative around Bitcoin's proof of work consensus mechanism and negative regulatory undertones from the Financial Action Task Force has really caused a big plummet. Again, we're going to take a look at what's going on in Austin in a little bit. A lot of clean energy here in Texas, just saying. Once these stories begin to permeate the market in May, uh, sentiment dropped to single digit levels on a scale of one to 150. Sentiment analysis said Nick Mancini, research analyst for crypto sentiment analytics uh, platform, Trade the Chain. That's what we always use every time we're doing these videos. So check that out, link in the description, sentiment analysis, trading, all that great stuff. So, whoops. So eventually this resulted in the trading volume for Bitcoin dropping by nearly half down 32% and that's no good and which is also very odd and and Nick also put this out uh, a couple of minutes ago before I did this video and he talked about the CPI the consumer price index so inflation is good for us as far as like crypto investors because it shows that all that money printing where all the economists and all the Federal Reserve is like it won't affect anything well here we are the CPI the consumer price index uh, just came out today uh, price index raises 5.4% or the cost of uh, goods is skyrocketing. Consumer price increased 5.4% in June from a year earlier, the biggest monthly gain since August 2008. Excluding food and energy, inflation increased 4.5, largest move since September of 1991, and used car and truck prices comprise about a third of the total CPI increase because all the different uh, uh, tool, not tools, tools and uh, and supplies and things that you actually need to build these vehicles especially right here in america uh went up steel automation robotics anything you want to think glass wood well not that wood is used but wood's gone up uh, tremendously so again we see these stories that would be positive as far as like what's going on and, and would actually be good for crypto and digital assets but yet when we take a look at the market we're still down so I think people, it doesn't matter what we say sometimes uh, because we're the only ones that actually are know what's going on in the real universe here in, in crypto land. Uh, but the again, I think people just get scared. They don't really realize the benefits that are happening. So that'll lead me to my next point, which I'm going to bring in Ian, who's over there at uh, Token Metrics, and he lives in Austin, and he's going to tell us what's going on in Texas as far as Bitcoin miners and what's happening. Okay, so as promised, what I did was uh, I brought in somebody who actually has uh, a pretty good uh, information set as to what is going uh, as far as boots on the ground for this uh, ridiculous cryptocurrency or Bitcoin mining situation as everybody moves around. Everybody, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show, I should say. Ian Bellina. Ian, what's All up? Right. Doing well, doing well. Uh, how are you? Not too bad. I see you got a snazzy, like I said, a snazzy new background, token metrics. Yes, uh, over here in Austin, Texas, and yeah. things have been go going pretty well in terms of Bitcoin mining. So definitely here to, to, to uh, discuss any insights. Yeah, so the insights is, is like this. I'm getting pretty ticked off by these. It seems like we get these positive stories, but then we get these negative FUD stories about, oh, well, poor China. You know, they're, they're letting go of all these different miners and, and, and they got kicked out. And I'm like, I don't care what happens and what, what really is going on in China. I, what I care about is how the infrastructure is being moved from one country into other countries and especially in individual regions. So you live in Austin. And when we were talking, you told me something interesting about the miners that are coming over there. So let us know what's going on there as far yeah. as like uh, in, in country. So what do we got? Yes. So lots of miners from China have been moving over here to Texas because Texas has lots of clean energy. It's, it's one of the few states that's not really tied to the whole country's uh, grid. Mm -hmm. But the main thing I'm saying is, so I met a CEO of a crypto company for Bitcoin mining with clean energy, and he told me business here is booming. Lots of miners from China coming over here, primarily because even though crypto here is not as open as other parts of the world, yeah. there's less political risk. Right? So somebody can come here, establish a business, and not be afraid of the government coming here and taking the business, right? Because here there's just more freedom in that sense. Yeah, right? and that makes sense. Go ahead. Plus, also having a, a place like Texas or other parts of the country with clean energy, if because now Bitcoin miners are getting into the marketing business. Elon Musk and Tesla kind of called them up by putting them on front street by saying Bitcoin is not really an, uh, energy efficient. So now all these miners are looking to reinvent themselves. So what better place than to come to Texas or other parts of the world like this? 
it, it, yeah, it is interesting. And then here's, here's another interesting thing. Uh, I think one of those Tesla factories is right down the street from you guys in, in Austin. Am I correct? Uh, I mean, somewhere in, in Austin, uh, actually in, in this building, I mean, there's also rumors that Tesla might, might be opening an office here. So Tesla is basically taking over Austin, Texas, in essence. <laughs> I, th I find it very interesting about one thing, and that is that, uh, you know, Elon talks about clean energy, and all of a sudden he's in one of the great states that has a ton of clean energy and a ton of land and a ton of space. If you're, if you're not from Texas, you don't really realize like just how vast Texas is. Now, Alaska, of course, is, is, is a much bigger state, but it's one of the biggest states. I think it's the second biggest state in, in America. And we just have just sprawling lands and we have a lot of nuclear, well, more so uh, wind and solar. So. So Ian, real quick, when that, when that CEO was talking to you about it, when he says business was booming, was he talking about the people coming in? Was he talking about building infrastructure? Or was he just talking about requests from different people? Uh, uh, he, was, he, was to, he, was, he was talking about people coming in, uh, new customers coming in, and just the level of interest in Bitcoin mining in Texas prior to other past years. So they definitely did see a shift because we pr pretty much China had over half of the hashing power in Bitcoin and mm -hmm. now the hashing rate dropped almost 30%. So that's migrating to, to the US. So in a way, I think it's beneficial long-term for Bitcoin because now China doesn't have too much control of Bitcoin hashing power. Which I think is great. I'm so happy with that. I, don't, I never liked to be over there and that's just how I felt. But um, we talked, yeah, why, likewise, right? We had, uh, we had Chad Everett on from uh, Winstone. He's also over there in Texas, and he said the same exact thing. A lot of people coming in, he talked about. But the one thing that he did say, which was interesting to me, was that his their whole game is infrastructure, building infrastructure for these miners. He goes, these guys just don't get it. He goes, they come over here and they think that we're going to set them up in a month. He goes, it's going to take a year plus to get everything going. So I know that the business is booming, but I don't see... Uh, these miners just moving over and just kind of just building it all up uh, all of a sudden. But I'm glad that they're coming here as opposed to, I don't know, Kazakhstan or some crazy place like that. Maybe. So, I, yeah, so I can see it. So, okay. So uh, anything else going on over there, Austin, in Austin, as far as like blockchain technology, that type of thing? Yeah. I mean, I moved here. One of the main reasons, there's a huge crypto community here. Almost every single week is a crypto event and there's lots of interest. So not just Miami is becoming a crypto capital of the U.S., but also Austin. So the way I view it is you have Wall Street that moved to Miami during the pandemic. Then you had Silicon Valley that moved to Austin, Texas. So you have basically VCs in Austin and you have um, hedge funds moving to, to Miami. So for me, since I'm more of a long-term value investor, this has been a great community and a great scene to be here in, in crypto. Yeah, I agree. And I'm going to do the same thing with Puerto Rico. I think that there's a lot of uh, crypto people over there. We'll see how it all works out. And then, uh, Ian, before we take off, let me just share my screen real quick. Ian, if you guys uh, remember for, uh, gosh, what was it, six, seven months ago or so, we did a nice little video mm -hmm. about doing your own research. And Ian was able to graciously tell us two different ways to do it. First of all, was, his, was the old fashioned way to look up all the information, you know, find out, you know, who the team was, look behind it, read the white paper. And it was great. You can find that uh, all, all for free at uh, danteachescrypto.com. It is in module four. It is the very first video. So Ian, I think that's like one of the most popular videos we have on the channel because everybody wants to know how you turn 20,000 to 5 million. And then on top of that, there's a link over to uh, Ian's channel. So I have to tell you, for thanks for coming on the show. So I'll just give you a nice little plug over there at Token Metrics. Okay. Real quick, tell uh, us about it. What's going on? Yeah, so thank you, for, thank you for all the support. Thank you for the interest of your audience in Token Metrics. We always want to give crypto customers or crypto people a better, better insights into becoming smart investors using data, analytics, and machine learning. We're currently doing a Reg CF crowdfund. Right now, we're testing the waters. So our crypto community ha uh, has been indicating interest to basically buy equity in token metrics. Right now, we've already raised over three and a half million on WeFunder. You can check it out by going to wefunder.com slash token metrics. And our target is, is uh, four, four million. This is really a way for us to give back to our community. Um, WeFunder, W-E-F. R-E-F, U-N-D-E-R. Uh, W E F. A we funder. Yeah, we, we yeah. No worries. Yeah, so this is a way for our community to get Oh wow. A, yeah, so it's a chance for our community to get equity in token metrics. The minimum investment is one hundred dollars. And we, we could have gone and raised money to VCs, but for us we wanted to follow the crypto ethos, but do it in a legal manner. Because right now the there's still oh. 
unclear and uh, oversights into crypto regulations here in the U.S. So this was the best option for us to give our community and customers a chance to get ownership in token metrics. So thank you for, for the support and appreciate everything. Yeah, no problem. And then uh, real quick, because everybody's going to ask. Uh, so Rob, uh, you must have gotten paid for this. You got must have paid for this. You don't understand. Like in this community, it's it's us against everybody, right? We're battling the government. We're battling FUD. We're battling the lamestream media. So like like when I get Ian Ian to come on the show, and uh, he's super busy, I'll plug his stuff all day long. Ian, thanks for coming on. No money and all that stuff. I think I'm actually do a little uh, do a little digging into what you just talked about as far as we funder. So, my man, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Anything? Any last words of wisdom for the uh, uh, institution? No, sorry, for the retail investor out there. I mean, think long term. When in doubt, zoom out. We 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 all believe crypto is going to be the future. This is the next evolution of the internet. This is open finance. So don't look at the day to day, the month to month. Think long term. That's where the real money is as a value investor in crypto or, exactly. or, in, or in any capital market. Exactly. I wish people would just zoom out and stop trying to chase pumps. You're only, you're only going to fail. Just dollar cost average, value cost average. Do a split of both and just uh, set it and forget it. All right, Ian, thanks for, show, for coming on, man. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right. So that's it. So I hope that helped. Uh, look, um, I think, again, that things are going to be uh, doing pretty bad <laughs> in uh, the rest of this month, July. So just be prepared, just mentally be prepared that things are gonna drop. But the question you have to ask yourself is, am I a short-term holder, short-term trader, or am I a long-term investor? And that's really what it comes down to. On this channel, I can't give you advice. I I'm, it's just investment opinion, not investment advice. So you, you uh, need to do your own research, do your due diligence, and find out what's best for you and your family. But for me, personally, I'm just gonna hold to this because I see some very bright days ahead uh, coming up this year, 2021. So anyhow, that's it. So look, if you liked that video and you found value, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about on this channel are very time sensitive. And over on Dan Clips, which is that uh, little thing right down there, it says Dan Clips. That's our second channel. And we just did a deep dive into Avalanche and why I think it is the Amazon of uh, cryptocurrencies. And uh, you can check it out over there when it goes live, maybe today or tomorrow. So that's it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.